You're watching France 24. Let's go back to our top story now. After British Airways, Lufthansa, Europe's largest carrier, suspending all flights to and from China with more coronavirus cases now than during the uh, 2003 SARS uh, epidemic. The World Health Organization reconvening its emergency committee. For more, let's go to Washington and Dr. Stephen Morrison, director of the Global Health Policy Center at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, read you a quote a few minutes ago at a press conference in Geneva uh, by an official from the WHO saying, quote, we believe the chains of the virus transmission can still be interrupted. Can you, do you agree with that? I'm sorry. I, I had a hard time hearing you. There was some uh, uh, other voices coming along the lines. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. The, uh, just a uh, short while ago at, in Geneva at the World Health Organization, one official telling a press conference. Can you hear me now? Yes, but you're still, uh, there's other voices coming across your line interfering with you. Ah, we're going to try to fix that right now. W uh, 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 an official at the WHO say, telling a press conference, we believe the chains of the virus transmission can still be interrupted. Do you agree with that? Um, I uh, am encouraged that they're coming forward with that, uh, with that message. Um, I, I think that a considerable amount of uncertainty still hangs over this outbreak. Uh, and, and, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that um, statement um, sort of on its own without any question. I think this is still a, uh, a, a roiling crisis that's moving forward, forward at somewhat rocket speed. Uh, and and the, the government and WHO and others are scrambling to try and bring it under control. But it's moving forward very, very rapidly. And there's enormous anxiety uh, that the measures that have been taken up to now are not going to work. Uh, very effectively. Keep in mind, there's a quarantine in force in Hubei province, the epicenter uh, within China, of somewhere between 45 and 57 million people. That's a staggering uh, a statement and a staggering ambition. Uh, will that actually slow the progression? Perhaps, but it could have uh, a negative counterproductive impacts as well. We do not know. This is totally unprecedented. The, uh, uh, the spread of the virus is, is moving ahead outside of Hubei province into other major urban and rural settings. We, the, data that we, the data that's available has been uh, uh, very partial uh, and inadequate up to now. The, the government did commit yesterday uh, after uh, WHO Director General Tedros had gone to Beijing, engaged directly with the leadership uh, in Beijing in one agreement to have external scientists introduced to help wrestle with their Chinese counterparts uh, on some of the, the, the biological and scientific uncertainties that they're still grappling with. We don't know how transmissible this is. We don't know how dangerous or virulent this particular virus is. We don't know the precise source. So uh, we need to be very humble right now uh, in what we, uh, what we know and what we do not know, and that changes on a daily basis. I do believe that WHO is trying and valiantly to assert its leadership, to calm people, to get the right resources in to collaborate with the Chinese, and they need to be commended for the progress. U.S. government is moving CDC and NIH personnel uh, in to collaborate. There's been a breakthrough on that. The Chinese have kept our external scientists at arm's length for the last six weeks, which has been a source of great frustration. I want to add one more other, other point, which is scientists within China who are communicating with their counterparts outside of China are saying that the situation is much worse than what we've seen in terms of the official statements. Um, that's unsettling. Yeah, you, you wrote uh, in a post on the CIS, uh, CCSIS, uh, the, uh, this startling statement, I'll read it. This is an anxious, fraught and potentially humiliating moment for a Chinese government that in its new superpower status faces a public health crisis beyond its capacities. Beyond its capacities, Dr. Morrison? Yes, well, look at what we're, uh, what we're facing right now. Uh, in Hubei province, at the epicenter, um, the, uh, uh, the outbreak got beyond the control 
of government. There was a strategic delay of four to six weeks where uh, they did not uh, really acknowledge and begin to act on this, uh, be, largely because the local and provincial officials were having party congress. They were not. They did not want to be distracted. There was inadequate surveillance and intervention from the national level. Um, now they are scrambling to catch up, and the, what they're discovering is that their primary care system is wholly inadequate uh, for surveillance and response and care of those who who believe they may be sick or may be already symptomatic and who need care. So the, it's exposed this huge vulnerability, and now people are flooding into hospitals that themselves are not equipped to deal with this, and the government is scrambling to bring in external. They brought in uh, 500 military medical providers to assist in Hubei. They brought in another 1,200 or more civilian medical providers to try and do this. The supply lines of basic medical commodities have been disrupted, diagnostic tests, masks, basic therapies. And keep in mind also, for this outbreak, we do not have a vaccine and we do not have a dedicated antiviral or therapy for the coronavirus that we're facing. So we will not see a vaccine in all likelihood for at least a year. There's a lot of activity going on uh, to try and accelerate the development of vaccines and to accelerate the development of therapies. Uh, and that's hopeful, but they are not gonna come on stream very soon. Um, and so uh, all of those things uh, uh, lead to this statement that I made, which I admit is a fairly stark statement. Uh, the the uh, rate of infection is uh, estimated, I read, between two and uh, four uh, people for every person contaminated, whereas usually it's 1.4. So that is a, a, a very infectious uh, strain of, uh, of the coronavirus. Uh, nonetheless, scientists say that when a strain is more contagious, it usually dilutes faster. That's possible. Let me just say, during the SARS outbreak in 2002 and 2003, which as you remember, 8,000 people became sick and 800 people died, and it, and it was externalized, and there were super spreaders, and it was very dangerous, it was very virulent. The transmissibility rate was estimated at 2.5 to 2.6. That means every person who became sick contaminated an estimated 2.5, 2.6 individuals. And you had super spreaders who could do catastrophic numbers and could ignite explosive outbreaks in other parts of China or outside of China, which is what happened. Um, in this case, there's a debate ongoing as to what is the reproductive rate? What is the number of people likely to be infected by each case? Some people are arguing it's as high as 5.5. Um, what that says is that while that we don't know whether this is how dangerous this is, whether it's somewhere between a common cold and the SARS that we saw 17 years ago, uh, it's moving really fast. Uh, when we say it dilutes within the population, what does that mean? I'm not sure. Chinese, some of the Chinese are, are claim, uh, officials are claiming that within the pool that has been exposed to or infected by this virus, that over 50% are asymptomatic, uh, that they're, they're not suffering illness in this particular case. But we see no, we have no scientific data, we have seen no scientific data to back up that assertion. We do not know what the proportion is, uh, we do not what, know what the base population is that's become sick within China, and we do not know what, what per percentage of that has been subjected to extreme illness that requires prolonged care and puts people at high risk of dying. We know mm. the numbers that have died. We know that the actual right. fatality rate is probably lower than 2002 and 2003. So people are waiting to see, they're not jumping waiting to the to conclusion. See. It, it's, it's too early to tell. Dr. Stephen Morrison of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, thank you so much for joining us from Washington. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Stay with us, there's more to come.